good evening everyone uh, assalamu alaikum we are welcoming all of you on behalf of optometrist association of bangladesh for today's session and the topic is eye care practice pattern during covid 19 era i'm requesting mohammad olil abdul sir the founder director of binox to introduce our honorable panelist for today's webinar thank you a very good evening all of you uh, today we have a very esteemed panelist with us uh, to discuss about uh, of practicing pattern during this COVID era. And we have none other than uh, the renowned glaucoma specialist of Bangladesh, Dr. Sham Snowman. And from India, we have Professor Dr. S. Natarajan, the world's famous retina specialist. Now, to introduce uh, you know, Professor uh, Dr. Sham Snowman, uh, he is uh, presently heading the glaucoma department and senior consultant of Chittagong Eye and Infirmary. He is also Secretary General of Ophthalmology Society of Bangladesh, Chittagong uh, Wing. And then he's also Council Member of SARC uh, Academy of Ophthalmology. Now, apart from this, uh, of topmost these uh, positions, he is experienced, has more than 13 years of clinical as well as surgical experience in uh, cataract and glaucoma. And at the same time, he is experienced teacher and very good friend of all optometry fraternity. Now coming to introduce uh, Professor Dr. S. Natarajan, uh, all words becomes uh, very small to uh, introduce him. So he is uh, awarded Padmanoshi by uh, our president, honorable president of India. And then uh, he is heading our president of uh, Asia Pacific Ophthalmic Trauma Society and also board of trustee of Council of Ophthalmology, uh, Ophthalmology and he is also presiding uh, Asia Pacific Ophthalmic Trauma Society Organized Medicine Academic Guild with uh, 20 organization. So huge, huge responsibility apart from he is one of the finest vitreotina surgeon uh, in the world and uh, founder director as well as uh, managing director of Aditya Jodai Hospital Private Limited Mumbai. So without uh, wasting a lot of time, I would uh, like to request uh, Professor Dr. Sham Snowman to start with his presentation uh, and then we will have a panel discussion with our esteemed faculties. We welcome you once again for this knowledge fest. Over to you, Dr. Shams. Thank you, uh, Oliulla. Uh, thank you, Natrazan, sir. Uh, I am really delighted to be here with the Bangladesh Optometric Association as a guest speaker. And uh, I'm really uh, very excited to be with uh, Professor S. Natarajan, sir, my beloved friend. And uh, today I'm uh, going to uh, present uh, my presentation on my experience on this COVID era, managing the patient and uh, what is the role of our hospital and what is the um, practice pattern in Bangladesh. So, so what is the COVID era? It is an exam of uh, Almighty and uh, it helps us to feel for them, the patient and uh, its key scope and uh, um, to show our sympathy towards the lost. And it is a scope uh, to salute the front fighters and, and feel the hopes for them. And this is Dr. Shams Noman. I am a glaucoma specialist and heading the department of glaucoma at the Chittagong Eye Infirmary and Training Complex, the one of the biggest hospitals in the Southeast Asia. This is my institution. And uh, I'm really privileged and I'm really um, excited to be with you, Bangladesh Op Optometrist Association. And I really uh, uh, I feel my gratitude over them. So what is uh, the aim of practice uh, pattern? The aim is to continue to deliver the standard ophthalmic care to our patients in the safe possible way during COVID-19 pandemic period, maintaining safety of doctors and supporting healthcare providers. Uh, these are, uh, we are uh, in the COVID era, uh, we had to deal with some emergency patient. So we have to choose the, what are the ophthalmic emergency actually? 
So uh, in case of what are the ophthalmic emergency where the sudden onset of red eye, any form of ocular injury like physical, chemical, or thermal, sudden decreased distance vision, uh, less than two weeks, flashes and flutters, severe ocular pain, painful swelling of the eyelid, excessive discharge from the eye, foreign body sensation, sudden double vision, uh, new onset difficult to see at light, colored halos around the light, sudden drooping of eyelid, whitish reflex in the center, pain and foreign body sensation in the contact lens user. These are some emergency um, signs and symptoms what we had to deal uh, in the COVID era. Uh, all routine OPD patient to be rescheduled at least four weeks after lifting of COVID-19 nationwide lockdown is announced by government of Bangladesh. Now, in this, after, after post-COVID uh, 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 lockdown, uh, uh, we are planning a new normal situation. And now we treat the routine cases too, if patient wants to come. So what about the practice and what is the hospital, uh, hospital practice pattern? Not all together. We are not allowing all doctors to the hospital now. Um, make a time slot for uh, the different group of doctors and make a rotation and roster duty. Because the, uh, the, the plan, not if anybody is exposed to the COVID patient, um, uh, a doctor can take leave and uh, take an isolation. And uh, sometimes uh, uh, we are communicating with the phone and taking into account the phone appointments like fever or respiratory distress, loss of taste or smile, one emergency and emergency. And in the hospital uh, premises, uh, how to uh, and uh, what to do and what not to do uh, in the COVID period, especially in the hospital uh, premises. Uh, what about the entry zone? Um, in the entry zone, you used to do the skin of the fever, cough, loss of taste or smell, and you used to give them hand sanitizer, putting a bleaching powder soaked carpet in front of the entry gate, hospital stops, and entry reception and lip men should wear masks and gloves. No need to use the PPE dress, can use hospital OT gown. Maintaining minimal entry at the uh, reception zone with proper distance as much as possible. Maintain one way gate. Patient screening desk, what we are doing? A separate desk before going to the registration desk, their patient will be given hand sanitizer and disposable mask, history taking of the patient, a written form to be filled. Screening of the eye problems through history taking by paramedics, uh, which includes history of sudden what I have already told the what are the emergencies and, uh, and uh, taking uh, history from them. And actually in here, uh, we separate the red eye from the non-red eye patient. And if those patients identified as a red eye, uh, then uh, those patients are uh, totally referred to the red eye clinic. What about the registration desk? Here registration is done as per routine procedure uh, as the patient are already screened. A daily list of patients with valid phone number and address to be maintained as in any case of uh, contamination, we can trace the source. But a special declaration form regarding COVID hospital transmission risk and hiding of information hazards will be signed by the patient according to World Health Organization guideline. Online payment is appreciable. This can be topped uh, during appointment, during waiting, usually in the Bangladesh through the uh, Bcash or Nogal, for example, or by, uh, or by cards. So we, uh, it is better. It is better not to handle uh, cash handling. Uh, uh, it is better to uh, 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 transition, uh, make a transition to the uh, internet. Waiting time will be uh, brief from the here, as there will be a fixed allotted time disinfectant chamber after each patient issues. And this is a, a special form which should be filled up by the patient. Uh, what about the waiting room? According to standard guidelines, all chairs spread out, only one attendance with the patient, no magazine or mobile phone uh, charger at the waiting place. Crowding in the waiting area will be controlled from the registration list accordingly. 
What about the examination room? Uh, usually, uh, we do the 15 minutes per patient allocated, 10 minutes for examination and prescription, five minutes for disinfectants, then instruments, room door handles, sitting chairs, etc. cetera. Um, during the disinfection period by the assistant or hospital staff, doctors can go through the next file to save time. Only patient to enter in room, minimal talking, less talk during examination procedure, no yarp optometry, applanation prism, uh, properly disinfected with each procedure, no direct ophthalmoscopy, only indirect ophthalmoscopy with breath shield, minimal time in slate lamp with breath shield. Uh, this is a, uh, one of our ophthalmologists examining a patient with full PP. This is a slate lamp with a breath shield. Uh, regarding uh, personal protective equipments. Doctors and health staff present in the room, uh, both should wear proper mask, gloves, disposable gowns, multi-layer, face shields and protective goggles for doctors uh, and also uh, the healthcare personals and also uh, for the optometrist. Same for the optometrist, standard PP, not mandatory unless it is a suspected COVID patient, proper disposal of protective gears. Sequence of donning of PP, Step one, gowning. Step two, mask and respirator. Step three, goggles or face shield. And step four, gloves. What about the uh, doffing? We follow the first one is gloves, then goggles, face shield, then gown and mask. Selection of urgent operations. Because uh, within this period, the uh, for the total lockdown, uh, the hospital, uh, uh, the hospital, uh, is very much uh, was in a very losing concert for the because the most of the income comes from the operation. So uh, actually, uh, so proper uh, safety measures should be taken, and uh, we have to select the uh, operations which is actually uh, very much emergency, like ocular injury, macular on uh, retinal dissonance, retinal detachment, like IV injections, uh, um, intravitreal injections, and ophthalmitis. Retinopathy of prematurity, uh, congenital and acute glaucoma, congenital and traumatic cataract in the clinic. Actually, what we have uh, uh, in the clinic, we have to select those cases for the operations. Congenital and traumatic cataract, impending perforating or perforating corneal ulcer, tumors, and retinoblastoma. The patient entering in the ward, we have to uh, take some precautions. Allow one attendance for one patient. A repeat temperature taking and query with the questionnaire. Arrange a single room for every patient. Reduce unnecessary inpatient examination. Maintain social distancing. And uh, the routine preoperative investigation, sir, uh, before operations, routine test, uh, um, like, you know, uh, some uh, routine uh, ophthalmic test plus some biochemical and systemic test uh, is going on, like uh, complete blood count. Um, chest X-ray, COVID screening for suspected GI cases if possible. The infection is screen result need to be checked and confirmed before surgery appointment. What about the OT protocol? Uh, in Bangladesh, uh, a lot of the lot of our hospital is to do the peripheral camp surgeries. So now, according to our government uh, protocol and uh, protocol from the Ophthalmological Society of Bangladesh. No camp surgery is recommended now. And avoid elective surgery like cataract surgery, refractive surgery, DCR, and plastic surgery. But now, this is uh, this is a time of COVID era, but now in a new normal situation, we are trying to uh, uh, select some patient for the routine surgeries like cataract surgery, and also uh, plastic surgeries, and also retinal surgeries. And we used to avoid the general anesthesia cases uh, uh, unless it is an emergency. Uh, if it is an urgent, then uh, we have to uh, do the uh, COVID testing, like RT-PCR, uh, of the patient if possible. A minimal OT stop is man mandatory. Preferably, all surgeries must be daycare. Preferably, all surgeries must be done under local anesthesia. Prefer topical anesthesia over, over local anesthesia, especially in difficult surgery. Emergency cases to be given uh, precedence over the elective cases. Total number of cases to be limited and posted in the staggered manner. Patient mask should be changed before entering operation theater. 
All the healthcare workers involved in this surgery should have full sterile PPEs, choose the quickest possible surgical procedure. Surgery should be done by a competent surgeon with minimum time spent in the operation theater. There should be a 20 minutes time out between each surgery. Use of single operation theater for all aseptic surgery so that in any cases of shutdown, we have spare the operation theater. Anesthesiologist during GA should have the proper protective gear. What about the healthcare workers? Healthcare workers uh, should be minimum, uh, offer relevant infection control training, report temperature, abnormal symptoms every day, increase personal protection, and just set up inspectors and inspection group. And we have a set of inspectors and inspection group that they used to inspect the, all the uh, health workers. A minimum postoperative uh, follow up and less um, uh, postoperative hospital stay is encouraging. And doctor visit if any pain, blood vision, red eye, and discharge, etc. So one attendance is allowed with postoperative patient. So patient counseling is a very important factor. So frank preoperative counseling, education to the patient and attendance is crucial, vital to the prevent nasopremial cross infection. Every patient needs to pay attention to personal precautions. Environmental management is very much important, like prevent crowding, avoid lift, uh, prefer stairs, turn off the central air conditioning, disinfected rooms and instruments thoroughly according to disinfectant guidelines, protocol-based disinfection of the operation theater. It is better to stop the positive ventilation and proper disposal of wash and protective gears. So teleophthalmology is, has a great role. Teleophthalmology in the form of video conference, Skype, WhatsApp, mobile call, etc., can be practiced during COVID-19 situation. Consultation fee according to government rule. After lockdown, elective surgeries, um, uh, we are uh, now doing the, some elective surgeries. And uh, uh, this is our protocol, uh, how to select our surgeries and what is what should be done in the operation theater, what I've already discussed. And uh, these are some uh, action uh, before uh, coming to the hospital. Uh, okay. So what uh, my experience actually, uh, as I am a uh, Secretary General of an uh, Ophthalmological Society of Bangladesh, Chitong branch. So uh, uh, during, the, during this COVID period, I started uh, some academic, uh, academic services uh, for the uh, residences uh, from the OSB Cities Academy and uh, I included 200 students from all over the Bangladesh and with 44 lectures and five exam orientations. And that was very successful program. And these are uh, some pictures of that uh, program. And uh, um, during this period, around 600 people has been uh, treatment has been treated for the, because we don't have any very good software for the teleophthalmology. But we, uh, uh, we took the initiative to uh, uh, give service to the patient because the patient are suffering, uh, patient uh, uh, has a lot of suffering. So we started WhatsApp treatment and, uh, and almost 600 people has been uh, uh, taken uh, services. And it has been uh, encouraged in different uh, daily newspapers. So uh, I am, almost at the end. I'm really delighted uh, uh, to be here with Professor S. Natarajan sir. Uh, some pictures with him. Um, this is in the AIOS. This is in the SARC Academy of Ophthalmology meeting. And uh, I was awarded from this sir. Thank you, sir. And this is my very favorite Archie, sir's <laughs> grandmother. And uh, he's one of the uh, strongest person in the world. The great Achi. Thank you so much. This is a CITC presentation. Thank you, Dr. Shams, for a wonderful uh, presentation. Ask uh, now uh, 
moment and uh, uh, only to start the I mean, discussion. I made a presentation since you asked me to make, but I think it's almost similar, like all of us working during the COVID. And uh, Oli knows uh, what all we have done because I'm coming Oli also to do some publications. We did uh, several webinars on uh, an automat in automatic circle with automatic association to Oli and all. So I think uh, one thing which we have done is uh, uh, something which is still not uh, uh, really happened well, but the concept is teleophthalmology. We have already started from March with two companies, one a and and Hexilon. But apart from that, people like our own consultant, Dr. Akshay is doing through WhatsApp video call, and uh, I am doing through WhatsApp. And then another uh, hybrid model, which me and Uri are working is, we want to empower all the optometrists to see patients wherever they are, so that they don't crowd the hospital, and have a daily link between the optometrist and the ophthalmologist. And we need a qualified optometrist who can do indirect ophthalmoscopy. Maybe they have uh, OCT somewhere done, so that even if they are 30 kilometers away, or even whatever time distance. I think we can offer teleconsultation effectively compared to what we are doing through the app. Through the app, we can't examine the patient in uh, uh, ophthalmology. But at least if we go to an optometrist, we have the perfect uh, visual acuity, refraction, droplet pressure, and if required OCT in case they don't have nearby clinic can do. And then only when patient, for example, at least in my practice, diabetic macular edema, or macular edema due to CRBO, wet AMD, or retinal detachments, they come. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Shams, uh, for the wonderful session and uh, the insight how you are managing during this uh, lockdown and COVID era and how the protocol is going to be post COVID era. Now, uh, the main uh, issues remains with uh, all of us to caregivers for this eye care is how the patient can uh, reach to your clinic during this lockdown with a lot of restrictions for the movement and then a uh, lot of uh, accessibility issues with the travel and all those things. So how to bridge that gap probably Dr. Natarajan was trying to explain. So how do you see the scope of this uh, co-management or tele uh, ophthalmology practice in uh, Bangladesh? Okay, uh, you know, um, uh, what is going on in the Chittagong actually? I am telling about the whole Bangladesh. You know, a lot right. of vision centers in the Bangladesh. We have a lot of vision centers in the Bangladesh, uh, more than 50 vision centers in Bangladesh, and uh, almost 20 is established now, and 30 is uh, uh, partially is running. And uh, from, the, uh, from my institution, there are uh, five or six vision centers is running. And uh, we have a very good communication with them, with the tele ophthalmology. We have directly, uh, directly, uh, we are directly connected with them with the tele ophthalmology, like uh, like internet based connection. And they used to uh, see the patient, and they used to send the pictures to us, and then the consultants see the pictures, and then they can advise and tell them which patient has to uh, be referred and which patient not to. And uh, in that case, we can use. Uh, this is my first, and the second one is. And uh, you know, uh, in Bangladesh, uh, the whole the Bangladesh is not in the lockdown actually. There are some red zones, some yellow zones, and some green zones. And uh, the, the the from the yellow zones and the green zones, the communication is easy. But it's still, there are some restrictions. Uh, uh, and and you know, the cost is a very good issue because you know the transport cost is uh, very high now. And uh, you know the the patient the economical condition is uh, is not very much good after this COVID era. So in that cases, so in that cases, we encourage the, um, uh, the hospital, uh, uh, calling to the hospital and WhatsApp communication, even the messenger communication, those who have, who have access to the internet. And, and uh, we, we usually talk to the patient, uh, what is their problem? If, if they have some problem with the vision and uh, if he has uh, still, uh, what what is the role of optometry here? You know the patient has a minus ten diaptal uh, spectacle and he has bro she has broken the glass. In that case, this is an emergency for her because if uh, she has not any uh, no other glasses with her, so in that case, this is an emergency. So I used to uh, we used to tell them to come to the institute by or uh, go to your uh, uh, any other institute near or go to the private chamber near uh, their house. Uh, uh, to take the new glasses. And you know, some postoperative patients, uh, you can resist the postoperative cases to come uh, frequently because if it is a cataract surgery 
uh, you can the patient is good and there is no pain so uh, you can tell them uh, okay fine come to uh, come to me after two months no problem because post operative refraction is not very much mandatory it's not an emergency so in that cases we uh, manage the, those cases and uh, over the phone and over the whatsapp and all uh, what they have sent to us and with some previous prescription uh, if uh, if it is a red eye uh, severe red eye painful red eye sudden loss of vision some injury and uh, uh, they have to uh, they have to uh, come to the institution or hospital nearby by hook or by crook to save their eye and we have to talk to the patient and uh, i want to add one thing even though we consult with, uh, uh, you know some uh, conjunctivitis some epistaritis and allergic allergic conjunctivitis and some other uh, dry eye sy syndrome we can we can treat them uh, through the uh, you know whatsapp or to the uh, phone call but still it is better to tell them uh, please uh, call me after three days that what is uh, feeling what is the benefit of the treatment because sometimes they used to call to the doctor and uh, okay fine uh, allergic on the device if is taking a steroid is he used to do uh, the continue the steroid and that will create a blunder for the patient you know as a steroid induced glaucoma in that cases uh, uh we are maintaining uh in this ways and try to fill up the gaps thank you that's great sir uh do you see any medical logical uh, issues in just doing only whatsapp consultation or you want to keep records for this patient a very good question very good question you know the bangladesh medical uh, and dental council the bmdc has already recommended uh, uh this type of treatment like a tele ophthalm tele ophthalmology and tele consultation and tele ophthalmology with a software based and also tele consultation with different medias but they told they advised us uh, that uh, please do the documentation so uh, it is better to uh, do a chat with the patient and send the different documents so the bmdc has requested us uh, to just uh, uh, to uh, notify the uh, uh, documentation right so when you talk about documentation also the uh, core aspect of any eye checkup that is uh, the fundamental of checking vision and iop uh, how do you take care of that whether do you see the role of optometrist is more enlarged with this uh, yes. covid now but uh, part of tele optometry or tele uh, ophthalmology yes yes uh, it's very important because uh, we had a gap here when uh, he has a reduced vision or he has a, some spectacle problem so we are advising uh, them to uh, come to the nearby optometrist or uh, to the institution because it is not possible to treat them uh, and and uh, i have already told you that some uh, those patients have some contact lens problem um, some uh, high refractive problem and uh, the spectacle broken so in that cases uh, we used to take it as an emergency and try to solve it uh, uh, by any way because uh, uh, i i am requesting the whole association of the optometry of the bangladesh uh, try to make a group within you i don't know what what you are doing try to make a group within you and uh, and uh, uh, try to make a tele ophthalmology protocol and what to do and uh, so and uh, send to us the whole phone numbers and what is the uh, the central phone numbers or anything so that we can provide the patient uh, pro provide those communication system to the patient and uh, in that cases they will uh, uh, they will be get benefited from the optometrist too uh that's great uh can uh, professor uh, natrajan sir can enlight uh, how things can be uh, more smooth transition between this uh, tele uh, ophthalmology practice and, and co management thing if you can Give your thoughts. How? Yes. No. I I think we we run an optometric school. Plus we have a lot of alumni, and we, we, I'm also in touch with the Shankar Lake School of Optometry, and I'm recommending that uh, if patients do not travel to any, even if they want to travel, they are not able to travel in a vast country like India. I think the best will be to go to the optometrist and have a preliminary examination, where everything can be done. and they should be not only come to us they should can go to any they can have a tie up with any ophthalmologist 
so that even if they have a cataract somebody needs urgent they can be sent to the hospital immediately otherwise they can at least be scheduled okay, all, all the checkup done and you should patient should not be thinking their vision is going down and it's only a cataract it could be due to glaucoma it may be due to dme or maybe age related macular degeneration i think that has to be differentiated and i think we need this tele uh, optometry tele ophthalmology hybrid practice which will distribute the crowd so that one particular uh, optometrist or one ophthalmologist are not getting uh, many patients at a time so it can be distributed work can be distributed and then the contam contamination or the infection can be avoided oh uh, that's a great point actually uh, sir mentioned so more we uh, segregate or more we distribute the patient amongst uh, the eye care rivers i think it's better for everyone including the patient or the practitioner to maintain safe uh, distance not to crowd uh, the regular opds try to handle the cases probably at the source or at the level of optometry or vision centers and only when it's needed to be a super specialty medical management or surgical management then that can be referred to tertiary centers and institutions uh dr noman do you see any kind of uh, legal challenges uh, or battle that uh, needs to be taken care of uh, starting this co management in bangladesh because india we are open now and it's uh, quite valid to start this uh, tele ophthalmology and tele optometry practice so in bangladesh uh, any uh, rules regulation is to come for this uh, practice or still can we go ahead and uh, start uh, practicing uh, together actually uh, we don't have any specific rules for the tele ophthalmology and tele uh, medicine we have just started because bmdc has just permitted us to do that so now the ophthalmological right. society of bangladesh uh, uh, they are trying to make a protocol over the uh, tele ophthalmology and tele optometry i think the optometric association uh, of bangladesh they have to make a meeting with the ophthalmological society of bangladesh to make a protocol for the tele optometry too because this is very much important because the coordination if uh, this coordination uh, will help the patient very much and uh, we don't had any uh, we don't uh, we don't have any uh, problem doing this tele ophthalmology and tele optometry but the problem is the attitude uh, when i did a meeting in the uh, ophthalmological society of bangladesh so we are not very much habituated and you know the patient uh, the bangladeshi patient is not uh, very much oriented with this type of technique actually so it's a matter of attitude so uh, uh, we have to start first one is if it, though it is a new but we have to start if we will start patient will get the benefit day by day and if the right. patient will benefit and then it will be accept it will get the acceptance in the whole the social uh, in the whole the society and also it should be um, you know the it should be uh, 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 expressed through the different medias you know through the newspapers you know through the televisions and and these webinars too so uh, and uh, i think this will not be a problem later on but still we don't have any problem doing this but the problem is the only the patient attitude because patient are not very much satisfied with that and uh, now there is another issue you know the you know uh, every service should not be free so uh, there is a, a problem uh, whether it is a free service or it's a paid service if it is a paid service you have to be a very good system with the software and patient have to sit over them and and the very good internet connection should be uh, there and uh, and patient and doctors the institution they have a very good uh, uh, software and uh, to deal with and uh, and we, and we and for the starting uh, we can start with the whatsapp or messenger uh, in that cases uh, you know the um, you know the fee is a factor so uh, what uh, we are uh, thinking of actually so uh, so if it is a tele ophthalmology the fee is quite uh, reduced 30% reduction of the fee and uh, in the private chamber and also in the in institutional uh, background so um, because um, if we if we the cons that consultation fee is the same uh, like the uh, normal face to face consultation the there will be a very uh, negative uh, feedback from the patient so in that cases uh, to make it a familiar to the patient uh, 
uh, we have started with the free now. Now we are planning to make it uh, uh, with a payment basis. Thank you. In in India, we have started with payment only. Okay, and sir, I know. Yes. From the beginning, we have done 500 rupees in uh, our hospital, and I believe many are doing similar. And I am suggesting to uh, uh, our optometrist, which is uh, we are struggling. We are uh, where I am suggesting that uh, uh, even in tele optometry, tele ophthalmology will be easier. As you rightly said in Bangladesh, they are not happy. The patients are not having that, uh, uh, like uh, we are not examined and then telling. But I think uh, even in my clinic, it has taken three months to convince them, my patients, that the first uh, the senior consultant will see in the clinic. They will connect me by tele uh, this thing, and uh, which is uh, actually uh, patients are not that con convinced in the beginning. But today, I think I'm seeing this week. They are getting happy, and I think this is what important. I, so I think uh, definitely payment is uh, important because otherwise they think uh, if it is given free, it's not uh, important. And India at least is becoming uh, legal. And second is we can always have a disclaimer during the consultation itself. We also have a consent taken. So the, and then second in our hospital they pay first, and then they uh, buy the credit card, and then they have the consultation fixed. Similar thing can be done with optometrists. The idea is. Uh, so optometrists can, I have told only that optometrists can charge whatever for a physical consultation of 500 and another 500 rupees for the daily optometry, daily ophthalmology. That means he is making a second level of connecting with the consultant. And I said, we can have a co-management fee from that 500 and 100 rupees will go to the optometrist for referring the patient and then 400 go to the hospital and 100 should go to the consultant. So there is some incentive, otherwise even consultant says, why should I spend my time? And a hospital, we need to do that because the hospital also has to make money to pay staff and uh, uh, we are, uh, so many people are there. So we have to have an ethical and uh, med medically, medical legally correct and also put yourself on the patient's side and see whether you're happy. So I am uh, telling the same for the last 36 of years, regular practice. You have to develop a confidence and trust with the patient. And the patient, whomever you are saying, is not happy and confident with the daily ophthalmology. Better you tell them you go to a clinic because no point in convincing a patient. Patient should be understood, understanding we are doing in their benefit and then they, they should develop the trust in the teleophthalmology and then they should also have the confidence, okay, I have a problem. Uh, even though I'm not able to do today, the doctor will arrange uh, or the optometrist will arrange a uh, senior consultant and you can take second opinion, which can be done everything systematically and the patient can and pay. I think uh, it, uh, we should popularize that because uh, it'll, it's a win-win for everybody. So for the patient, patient is also saving money in traveling and the uh, optometrist also uh, is uh, getting some extra benefit in the COVID time. And ophthalmologist also is not getting instead of 1000 rupees, he's only getting 100 rupees, but at least better. And uh, otherwise he won't get the 100 rupees also. And in, the, in that process, whoever needs surgery will come and can be referred. And then even that I suggested a co-management where the optometrist can do the IOL measurement uh, the uh, uh, IOL mask, whatever they have, and then the uh, pre-op intraocular pressure, post-op uh, intraocular pressure, slit lamp. And there's a doubt, then they can go to the clinic. No doubt, if everything is 100% sure, like uh, in inflammation, end of is all that. And I think they don't have to go to the ophthalmologist for one month. And even at the end of one month, if he's a diabetic, they should be again do a, a teleophthalmology tele ophthalmology for a fundus photo. And only very few patients who need angiography should be referred. And, uh, and and maybe OCT. So I think uh, they definitely this guy. We I think uh, if we uh, I always felt if we don't believe the system and we don't have the conviction and how the patient will have conviction. So I am now convinced that this is the best way for the patient. I think I am convinced and I have a conviction that we should do teleoptometry, teleophthalmology, in, even in one year later, where you can so that a, a surgeon like me instead of doing 100 OPD and operating 5 or 10 of them, that means 10% operate, I can spend all my 100% time or maybe 90% of my time in surgery rather than doing the OPD. I'm not telling OPD is not important. OPD is very important. But I think the patient also should know and the staff and the second level consultants, they can do the routine OPD so that I don't have to do. And I can use my expertise like uh, doing very complicated surgery where nobody can do like no PLI in a trauma or a complex already two times operated, three times operated, fourth time they can come to me. So I think I can spend all my the 38 years of uh, experience for the patient rather than only doing OPD. We all need to 
uh, like particularly optometrist doctor and the patient three of us have to probably counsel each other and convince the patient this is the new now as they, as you said in bangladesh they are very conservative i, I think uh, they are similar to india only only thing is in india uh, people who are uh, like the teenagers and i am i'm sure they are bangladesh also same thing they are all most modern and we have uh, 60 plus and 80 plus uh, who are very orthodox uh, in their way of living like as you said uh, we should do as a ophthalmic society and optometry society some weekly public webinars so this we have done with professionals today so something like that i think only should do where we can have a public announcement and as you rightly said uh, sham you should do a television program you can have a, a, even between india bangladesh so i think that that's the gist of it uh, like uh, we need to bridge the gap between uh, the communication of eye care providers and the uh, end consumers which are the patient probably we need more of a honest program to them uh, right. more open forum program uh, with the uh, uh, people of bangladesh and uh, every aspect and uh, again request to the optometrist uh, of bangladesh to take this forward and try to connect with the ophthalmologist uh, society of bangladesh osp team i think chitagang already dr sams is heading and different part and take it forward how you can uh, do this co management and make it uh, a effective model to give a better access uh, there are a lot of optometrists are joining in the meeting i think there is a uh, it's a issue in a, it's a challenge in bangladesh what should be the what should be the uh, the perfect protective gears for the optometrist uh doing the patient examination uh what is the uh, uh, proper indian protocol sir right i think it's very good uh, question so what uh, the best way to manage this you need to uh, rotate uh, their posting uh, very frequently not to uh, length uh, make it very lengthy uh, for them so rotate their posting and uh, the pp remains the same as in uh, the face shield or even uh about the n95 masks that is uh, very important for them to prevent any kind of cross contamination uh, from the patient so by changing their schedule and keep giving more of rotation uh, with multiple people will make it a more effective tool and do refraction only those uh, patient if you suspect that there is a change in the prescription need not keep on refracting each and every patient if vision yes. is 66 yes. and n6 you don't have to do the refraction uh if somebody is coming for six month follow up and already vision with the glasses 66 and 6 again avoid the prescription if somebody is coming after a uh, very long time or very first time then you refract them or when it is absolutely needed then only those patient you intervene otherwise try to minimize your chair time or optometrist chair time to a least possible when you try to interact with the patient and, and I, most of the time even history taking we are trying uh, uh, tele consultation and trying to elicit all related history just uh, from telephone or even in the waiting area not in, inside the room kind of thing and even i think uh, 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 we can avoid the minute refraction very 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 fine astigmatism because it will really take time to uh, sort it out so i think we can avoid this also exactly so it's is time time to make it uh, uh, efficient time management and not to give more of chair time for the patient uh, in the hospital as well so uh, that is the whole uh, perspective of this patient care and there is a question for uh, the role of uh, optometrist uh, during this covid era in primary secondary and tertiary level so uh, again the role of optometrist remains same across the platform uh, ultimate eye care is only thing take uh, proper uh, protective gears as we are discussing and then try to connect with the ophthalmologist and give the best possible solution to the patient or whenever you need you need to make a proper referral to the ophthalmologist or specialist uh i think there was uh, it was very good session indeed for uh, the people of bangladesh uh, and probably we need to look forward to make a public uh, uh, forum to educate them so so that they understand the need of uh, this uh, reaching out to the nearby 
uh, eye care professional in optometrist and then connect to the super specialty doctor only when it is needed to decrease this chair time and uh, make it more effective uh, management tool. Uh, sincere thanks to uh, both of you. Uh, we are very proud of uh, 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 having you here. Uh, uh, meantime, to conclude the session, may I request uh, the president of uh, Optometry Association Bangladesh to say a few words. Uh, th thank you. Thank you, very much, sir. And thank you, uh, Dr. S. Natarajan and Dr. Sans Numan, sir. Uh, thank you for being with the Optometry Association of Bangladesh. So, uh, like, uh, we are uh, quite uh, happy uh, for, for you know, like, uh, you are joining with us and uh, give us some guideline about uh, for optometry management, and that's uh, really uh, needful for this situation only. Okay, that's really awesome, awesome session you uh, both are uh, taken by uh, taken, and thank you for uh, arranging such like uh, a winner. We are grateful to you, Dr. S. Natarajan. Thank you for giving us such kind of guidelines, and Dr. S. S. Some snowman. He's my uh, respected teacher also, so. <laughs> Uh, we are the first batch, and he is my uh, direct teacher. So we are really proud of you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, and I want to just tell uh, Oli is uh, was a favorite of my father, and my father was very close to all the optometry students as well as optometrists. So thank you all. And I think uh, Oli was a very proud uh, student of my father. And later, Oli is a faculty, and now Oli is my teacher. <laughs> no, not a and uh, yeah. and uh, when, when I was when I was doing the fellowship in the LB Prashad Eye Institute, and uh, at that time Oli uh, was helping me a lot. And uh, thank you, Oli. <laughs> no, I know not only helping. I mean, even now, like uh, my, uh, my social media is my teacher, yes, and, also, yes, yes, and also how to disseminate because yes. we are creating a master class in uh, YouTube, and uh, he has made the YouTube for <laughs> me, but I'm not able to still start it. But I'm doing. I have decided to learn and become a student, so I'm doing it. So we are trying to educate the people, public, doctors, students, and uh, professionals. I'm glad. That's what I'm saying. He's my mentor on that, and also we are trying to do a big uh, mega paper on our optometry because we are depending on the optometrists. From day one, Natarajan cannot work without optometrists. Not now. From '84, because '84 I was the first faculty of the uh, LA School of Optometry. Right, sir. And, Thank you. Uh, we feel uh, both uh, optometry and ophthalmologists are integral part of uh, IK system, and we can make it more effective uh, for uh, the global reach and the ultimate uh, help for the uh, patient. Thank you, all of you. I think it was a nice session to connect you with the legends uh, in ophthalmology from uh, Bangladesh as well as from India, and we look forward to seeking help uh, in future. We will try to organize a public forum uh, for making awareness for this uh, uh, tele, uh, telehealth program. And uh, keep, keep blessing us. Uh, and thank you all of you. All that in this, this could not be possible without your help. Wish you all the best. Stay safe and uh, uh, keep remembering in the wise. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.